Hey everybody, today I got some Sega Genesis games on eBay and I'm going to test them out to make sure they work before I go leave positive feedback. Uh, looks like we got Double Dragon, Battletoads, Exo Squad, Earthworm Jim 2, The Adventures of Rocky and Bowwinkle, Alex Kidd, and Ghostbusters. Pick Peter because he's the most well rounded character. Recently, there's been a lot of ghostly activity happening here and there. Yeah, we'll have work. Hello? Help me, Ghostbusters. Ghosts have appeared in my home. This game's a lot different than the um, NES version. The tables move by themselves and shells fly around in the house. Okay, looks like C jumps. B shoots the uh, gun here. And A puts out a bomb. I guess I only have two bombs though. Good news is though the game works. <laughs> Looks like when you die, you turn into a mummy. As you can see, it's really Japanese style, like super deformed. Trying to get Slimer to follow me through here. Well, obviously I could learn how to play this one, but that's Ghostbusters. I'm playing this on a Sega Model 2 with the 32X attached over composite video cables. And those are run through a VCR, through a piece of coax into the Quasar console TV. Okay, now look on Battle. 
Bell Toads. There we go. I never had it, uh, Jonathan. I never had it as a kid. I think one of my one of my buddies in the neighborhood had it on NES. I uh, definitely never had it on Genesis because it was like old news by the time I was buying Sega Genesis games from like summer '93 and on. Okay, B punches. C jumps. Looks like A doesn't do anything. I'm no expert, but uh, I'm assuming that the, the difficulty of this game is probably not as high as the NES version. Would have been really cool if I did have this when I was a kid and I was able to play it and get good at it. I mainly had, um, the first game I got was the Sonic 2, which was a pack-in. Then I also had, uh, also had Tasmania was the first game I bought only a, a week later. This enemy is definitely not on the NES version that I can remember. It's really a shame that a lot of these, uh, I know, <laughs> Jonathan, I love that. It's a shame that Nintendo had the whole uh, monopolistic uh, practice where, you know, it, the publisher wasn't allowed to publish this on Sega for, um, for I think, up to two years after the original port on any competing console. Okay, well that's the first level. We'll go ahead and try a different game. All right, let's give Adventures Adventures of Rocky and Bowwinkle a try. This cartridge was actually really, really dirty. I did clean it with a Q-tip and rubbing alcohol, but uh, it seems like I still have to blow on them to make a better connection. The condensation from your breath um, makes a better connection with the system. They always say it's uh, it's bad for the system, but I've been running the same Nintendo since the late 90s. It's not my original, but I've been running the same uh, the same Nintendo since the late 90s. 
blowing in my games, and uh, I don't blow in them all crazy. I kind of breathe in them with a little bit of hot breath, and that makes them connect better and work every time. Usually don't have to do that with the Genesis. All right, Rocky and Bullwinkle, Frostbite Falls, where a major event is about. Uh, I press the button and let it skip past the the, the uh, intro there. Not a moment too soon, our heroes depart for the snow-covered Grimalaya Mountains in pursuit of the purloined prizes. I'm rebuying this game. Um, I didn't have it as a kid, but I did buy it from Rhino Video Games in the uh, mid-2000s. I'm kind of a sucker for um, licensed games, even if they suck. If it's a, if it's a cartoon that I really like, I'll kind of give it the benefit of the doubt, I guess you could say. This is better than I remember it, though. I think I paid $8 with free shipping. So if you like Rocky and Bullwinkle, and you're looking for a cheap Genesis game to pick up. This is uh, pretty neat. Interesting, if anything else. Battletoads, I paid 20. The Ghostbusters, I uh, think I paid 17. With, uh, in, a, in an open op. The others will buy it now, but Ghostbusters, I paid. In an auction, I paid 17. It uh, it's usually like about a, I think about a 30 dollar game as far as a loose cartridge, maybe 25 if you, if you go for buy it now. But in an open auction, I paid um, I only paid 17. Exo Squad, I paid about 13 for that. Alex Kid, I was kind of pissed off. I I paid 11 for it. Uh, which I remember having multiple copies of that in the past. Since it was a pack-in title, it's like... Oh, crap. <laughs> There's a cheap death. Uh, that's Rocky and Bowwinkle. Try something else. That seller gives positive feedback. Uh, now we'll try Double Dragon by Ballistic. I think the, the contacts on my 32X are probably a little oxidized. I've had this Sega Genesis for years and never had a problem with it, but the 32X I've only been running for, uh, like, let's say, six months. Let's see if we can... Let's see if we can get to uh, 50,000 like Jimmy Woods on The Wizard. Damn. Well, right off the bat, it's, it's uh, harder than the NES version, but I don't think it's because of... It's harder because of bad programming. Seems like the hit detection is a little off here. Okay, so if you if you tap the forward direction twice, he does a headbutt. If you press B, he jumps. And then uh, A, uh, looks like A kicks, C punches. Music definitely sucks compared to the NES version. Oh, okay. Good tip, Jonathan. I 
I'm going if if anybody's wondering, I'm I'm going for the full set of Sega Genesis games. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, the music is bad. Um, I'm going for the full set of Sega Genesis games. I'm trying to be realistic as far as the prices, and that's why I'm going for loose carts. Uh, and I'll, I'll probably never get Outback Joey unless I find it at a flea market for two bucks. Um, but every other game I'm gonna gonna attain. Uh, let me pick up my camera here, show you guys. That's what I got so far. I've got about 25 of the 32X cartridges, and I think somewhere around um, I'm close to 350 on the cartridges. I've been actually only collecting <clears throat> the Genesis cartridges. <clears throat> Excuse me, guys. Since uh, late July or so, uh, I always had a copy of Beavis and Butthead laying around because uh, that's my favorite Sega Genesis game. But then I I've been playing on an EverDrive for years. Um, but you know, I I've in going around collecting NES games. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> that jacket right there. <clears throat> It's uh, it's actually um, themed like GI Joe Adventure Team from the '70s. It's a mechanics jacket that I got from my dad, and I added some Sergeant Chevrons from my old job as a law enforcement officer, and uh, added the GI Joe Adventure Team patch. <laughs> I've got all kinds of random stuff laying around this room. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I've been collecting the, the Genesis cards though since um, since the summer. I passed up so many nice uh, loose Genesis cards going around collecting NES cartridges uh, that I, I figured like, you know, there's no way I'll ever complete an NES set. And to be honest, um, I have a lot more fun playing 16-bit era games. Oh, okay, so there's Chris's uh, Volkswagen Beetle in the background there. A little Easter egg. I promise I don't suck, guys. <laughs> I just suck at this game. Squad. Uh, me and Exo Squad kind of have a history. Uh, for Christmas in 1994, I could only have two Sega Genesis games for Christmas. Um, and obviously, one of them was Beavis and Butthead. And I was torn on the second game between Exo Squad and Shaq Fu. Uh, I ended up picking Shaq Fu, being more practical, because it came with a free music CD. Uh, I actually really enjoyed Shaq Fu at the time because I think it was it was really my first uh, versus fighting game. I didn't I didn't own I had played Mortal Kombat, uh, but I didn't own it, and I had never really really played Street Fighter, and so I thought Shaq Fu was great. Yeah, yeah, Jonathan, it was a it uh it's it's not that bad of a game. Uh, the you know I didn't know I think I've heard Chris say something. Also, um, he didn't know it was bad until the internet told him that it was supposed to be bad. <laughs> uh, but Exo Squad, in an alternate timeline, I would have received that game for Christmas because I was a big fan of the toys and the TV show. Uh, it's actually a, a, a pretty heavy-hitting um, animated show for kids. Uh, I have the DVD here. If you ever want to watch a good animated show that has kind of like sort of adult themes. Check out Exo Squad. The game is really hard. I didn't get it until I was a uh, retro game collector in the, you know, early 2000s. I think I think I finally got a copy in like 2002. And uh it has a really bizarre gameplay style and uh a really bizarre control scheme, it's kind of similar to uh Alien Soldier. 
the uh, Sega Channel exclusive. The first level is really um, reminiscent of playing something like Afterburner, but then after that, it's a side scroller. Uh, but it's 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 actually really hard to get through the first level, which is supposed to be for training. Okay, Salvo Fire. Yeah, let me turn it up a little bit. Salvo fire, hold A, then release. Normal fire B. Activate quick move system. Press C. I think you gotta dodge these. You shoot the shoot the arrows. And you dodge the circular uh, bombs. See, I'm doing terrible. Hopefully, I can make it through the uh, the first level, so you guys can see the side scrolling. It's really hard to dodge these bombs on a uh, 2D plane. You you can't. Yeah, like poor depth perception. Great, I made it. <laughs> Again, I don't really know what the hell I was doing. Okay, now this is the other uh, type of level come on up here. Oh, look at those graphics, guys. Again, this was available like fall 1994. Um, at least at Christmas time, I know it was available. Okay, walk, hold right, salvo, fire, B, then release. Aim gun up, press up. Aim gun down, press down. Shield, press A, jump, C. Crouch, press left get up, press left again. So backwards um, is how you crouch and then you press it again. Night, Jonathan. See you in the Discord, man. I definitely prefer these type of levels. Uh, now you, you seemingly have infinite ammo. So, looks like a, a side scroller, but it's really just a shooter. <laughs> I need to practice this game and learn it because it seems like I'd have a lot of fun with it. Hey Derek, what's up man? Can I show you something? Got my San Jose Sharks uh, hockey puck here. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you, I guess obviously you didn't, <laughs> obviously you didn't catch the beginning, but um, I got some games from E in the mail from eBay today. Yeah, yeah, um, the game's Exo Squad. I got it for $13.99 on eBay. Uh, I don't believe the crosshair can be turned off.
I bought it on eBay and now I'm testing the games to make sure they work properly before I leave positive feedback. So I figured I'd go ahead and just throw my camera on and stream it. After I beat this level, we're gonna move on to the next game. Uh, we still gotta try out Alex Kid and Earthworm Jim too. I haven't seen Metal Jesus' review yet. I, I watched Game Sack, and uh, it always, it, I didn't have enough time to watch that one as well, but I plan on it here when I'm done streaming. Um, it's just insane how in depth Game Sack goes on a technical level. Um, but, you know, Metal Jesus uh, definitely is kind of like a lighter watch, but sometimes that's good. You just want a 10 minute summary of the game system instead of learning about uh, all the graphic modes and de-interlacing and all this uh, techno babble that might go over some people's heads that uh, GameSat goes in depth with. Also, um, one of the friends of Metal Jesus, John Hancock, he posted a video too and I'm gonna watch that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I like Metal Jesus. He's just kind of like the uh, everyman's. Uh... Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> wow, I think that's the farthest I've ever gotten that level. I gotta uh, start playing that game then. Yeah, I like Metal Jesus. It's kind of like good for you know just mainstream people that are getting in, getting into the hobby. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the nickelback of YouTubers. <laughs> okay, Alex Kidd. Uh, not the original pack-in title for the Genesis, but it was available as a pack-in title um, between the time that Altered Beast was packed in and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, also, uh, at, there was a lot of weird packages that they sold the Genesis in. I think Joe Montana... Um, Joe Montana's um, Sports Talk Football was available as a pack-in. Uh, the TV is a 1982 Quasar. Uh, only played this on a super cheap handheld Genesis system once. I got it at Walgreens. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the one that accepts an SD card. Now, um, the TV, the TV I got for $10 at a thrift store. Um, yeah, Derek, I had that same game system. Um, it just, it, I liked it a lot actually for what it was, but it just died on me. Um, now our TV is a, uh, Quasar TV. I believe the, the, it's, it's actually Japanese. The parent company is Masushita Corporation. And I think that later they their, their name for the american market was quasar and later I, I believe they became panasonic in the u.s um this has stereo speakers uh it has um a regular coaxial in and um it's never been refurbished really other than uh lightly by myself uh, the tv i got for ten dollars and the color was all messed up and I was able to go around the backside uh, because I, I, I realized that when I adjust, when I um, tweaked the color adjustment knobs. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, I, I have a 13 inch um, TV that has an integrated VCR that I love to mess around with. Um, these color adjustment knobs, when I would turn them, the color would become uh, I would have the correct good looking color momentarily as I was adjusting the color, but then it would it would turn all whacked out and uh, What I did is I, I unscrewed that. Oh, yeah, definitely definitely. He's a big fan of wood grain <laughs> um, I unscrewed the the circuit board that Has those knobs on it from the back 
and um, they're, they're little potentiometers. And um, I found out that if you buy Electronics Contact Cleaner and you really spray it with the little ho the little uh, straw, you impregnate it into the potentiometers and you turn them like crazy, it pulverizes the little bit of dirt or grease or grime that's inside of them. And the next thing you know, I fired the TV back up and it worked great. And that was probably like four years ago. Um, it only has coax input, uh, but I have a nice piece of HD, you know, high definition grade RG6 coax that's ran from it to a VCR. And then I have all my systems going through composite uh, video into the VCR. Yeah, I, I'm not like an, I'm, I'm not a, a genius uh, by any means, but uh, I'm good at like reading stuff on the internet and going step by step. <laughs> and, and also, uh, I hung around with a lot of arcade collector guys for a while and learned a couple weird tricks that you can do to fix things without really tearing into them and desoldering stuff. Um, but yeah, let's try Alex Kid. <laughs> Obviously it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, a couple of the TV, the uh, the videos on my channel, uh, people comment that, that they think it's an overlay. Uh, right now I don't really have it uh, framed up that good, and I don't have a lot of my extra lights going here in, in my game room, but um, I can, you know, if I set it up just right, it looks just like one of those overlays. Shame they never made another a second Alex Kid game on the on the Genesis. Alex Kid kind of reminds me of a of a Japanese um, cartoon called uh, Crayon Shin Chan. This would be cool if it was like a re a rebranded uh, Shin Chan game. Here I have a copy of Shin Chan for the uh, Famicom. <laughs> yeah, he he slides like Mario whenever um, whenever you let go of the the D pad. Um, but it's it's not a, it doesn't feel as as satisfying or as tight or however you want. Oh, and obviously um, you have one hit deaths, so um, it doesn't feel as good as Super Mario. That's Alex Kid. Let's go ahead and try out Earthworm Jim, the second one. Which is kind of a rare ish game. Yeah, definitely. And boy, boy in his blob. Great graphics on this game. I think it came out in like 1996 after a lot of people already had owned their uh, their PS1 or Saturn for you know for a good year, year and a half. I did have Earthworm Jim um, with my original Genesis collection. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I'll have to check that out whenever, uh, whenever I watch that video. The gameplay of Earthworm Jim is a little weird. You've never played it before. A lot of the games that I that I owned as a kid, I'm really good at them. But certain games, if I've never played them before, I really suck. <laughs> I 
Oh, I know. It looks it looks 32 bit. It looks it looks just looks a lot like uh, your typical Saturn um, 2D side scroller from 96, 97, but it's on a Genesis. I I kind of um, like to e even though I had a Saturn, I was a big fan of it. I wish that we lived in some kind of alternate reality where the um, Sega Neptune was pushed as the. Uh, the, you know, the Sega 32X slash Neptune was uh, pushed as as uh, Sega's next big console. Hmm, used to big, okay. Well, I don't know what I'm doing with this one, guys. I'll have to get into it later. Um, well, I'm going to let everybody go. I tested all my games. Now I can leave my positive feedback on eBay. Uh, but I will uh, talk to you guys later in the Discord. And have a good one.